Good afternoon. Um, thanks for letting us speak here uh, shortly. We are talking about a highly complex topic, which uh, which we have highly simplified because of uh, short of time. So uh, uh, I'm going to present a few examples of what kind of a role Red Hat can play or is playing when uh, when building networks for for you know, extending 4G networks and building 5G networks. Now, remembering that we are a 100% uh, open source technology vendor, no more, no less. We do not have network functions. We do not have anything like that. We just have technology to be used by our partners building the, uh, the networks. And obviously we are best known as a Linux vendor, which is still true. We are a Linux vendor, Red Hat, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but we have many other products as you can, as you can see. So, very simple agenda, few topics. So I'm going to cover a little bit on our development model, which is unique. That's important to understand. And then open source in building virtualized RAN, Edge, 5G, uh, with uh, uh, different types of cloud plat plat uh, platforms. And then Francois will step in and talk about uh, security a little bit. Now, this is uh, what uh, Red Hat is kind of famous of, in, in addition to our products, of course, the culture. So all, the Red Hat's culture is really kind of centered around open source model, open source development itself, of course, which I explain soon, uh, the unique model. But everything what we do is uh, kind of... Uh, copied or, or taken from the open source projects where people collaborate with, between each other, no matter if they are competitors or partners or customers or academia individuals. And we do use the same model internally in the company. And it's actually um, amazing to see how that works in, in a company, uh, company like Red Hat. And it really works well, and we can do a lot of stuff by people just voluntarily helping each other, which is not very usual in many companies. Now, our open our development model, as I said, it's uh, unique, and I quickly explain. So, on the both uh, uh, right and left hand side on this slide, we have our end products, which, as you can see, there are many of those, not just Linux, many of those, and those are the products we. We uh, we support commercially support uh, and providing providing you know training uh, security fixes and all those things, but uh, what is what is important to know that uh, about 75 80 percent of Red Hat engineers software developers they work directly in the middle part which is the open source project out there directly there, so we don't have we don't have a problem of pushing things to open source communities because we develop them directly there. And one, once the community releases their, their community release, we take that release, like for example OpenStack, we create uh, our own um, open, OpenStack uh, project called RDO. Again, visible to everybody, everybody can access it, you know, source code, binaries, documentation, packages, whatever there might be, and use it if they like. But we don't, we don't support RDO, we, we don't support that part. So we fix uh, uh, maybe problems or, or, or make it better for enterprise and carrier use. And then once we are happy with that phase, we create the product, OpenStack, Red Hat OpenStack platform in that case, and that we support fully. And every modification we do, on this journey, everything will be put back into upstream communities. And why we call this uh, upstream first model means that uh, we can commit to a new, new feature in our product only after the community has agreed to put it into community release, which is a different model than a, a, a traditional vendor do. So we cannot commit to any feature unless we know 100% sure that it will be in community release. People say that this model might be a bit slower, and we know it is a bit slower in in uh, in uh, introducing new features. But uh, the point is that we never deviate from community, so the maintenance of this thing is way easier because it's not us maintaining the the, the code base; it's uh, thousands of developers out there. 
that's a, that is a unique model. Now, I will talk a little bit on what our position uh, is, can be, or is actually building these networks. Again, we are not the guys who build the networks, we are just a software vendor. And uh, I start to talk a little bit about our edge. So everybody knows that edge is a hot topic, everybody talks about it, and it's not uh, industry specific. Of course, we, f we focus on telco, but it is not an industry specific. Every single, single industry will uh, benefit from, from uh, edge. And our uh, software platform, whether it's a virtualization platform or container platform, the strategy is that uh, we can um, uh, we can um, we can place our software platform on any of these uh, these footprints: physical footprint, virtual, private cloud, and public cloud, and have applications run on that platform in a similar way, regardless of the of the footprint. And to uh, add that, the the edge or the location dependency in the case of edge, the same thing but can deploy our platforms on all these different places. So single platform, uh, virtualization platform or container platform, those are still different things, but one uh, virtualization platform and one container platform can be, uh, can be located to any of these places and have your application seeing a consistent environment, regardless of the location. Now, a little bit on VRAN, which is another hot topic, virtual RAN. So, on the left-hand side, I have this diagram taken from ITUT document, which describes on high level the functional split of base station. So, first on 4G, on the, on the far left-hand side, uh, the idea is to take the BBUs, which is in the middle part, take the BBUs, baseband units, from the antenna side to the edge and run them on cloud platform. So, although I say virtual BBU, we need to remember that can, it can be also containerized BBU, but it's too complex to say all these things all the time. So, whenever I say virtual, it can be containers, just remember that. So, we take BBUs, make antenna sites as simple as ever possible, uh, uh, easier to maintain, less power consuming, and all these things. And then take the BBUs uh, out of the antenna site and uh, have the, the BBUs would have a nice view to the whole radio landscape because they need they see many remote radios so they can manage the radio interference way better so that will be the edge that the BBU is a workload on the edge <coughs> data center that's uh, <coughs> important to remember and the same thing on on 5G so 5G standardization decided to split the BBU entity even into two different things which are called distributed unit which is next to the remote radios and centralized unit which is a, a edge data center and uh, the idea of 5G uh, standardization is that depending on what is the connectivity to the antenna site you can really take uh, the distributed unit away of the antenna site if you have a fiber to the antenna site. If you don't, then you can co-locate the DU into antenna site and have a little bit relaxed connectivity requirements. And this model is exactly what is uh, deployed at the famous Rakuten case in Japan, which was a big deal in the Mobile World Congress this year. So they have 40 uh, radios, remote radios, but the network side is according to 5G spec, DU, CU, uh, entity division, which is um, important to know because they do have a, a growth path or the upgrade path to 5G already <coughs> set and done. And uh, in Rakuten case, the, the red box is the cloud platforms. It's all Red Hat technology all the way from the DU to the CU to the mobile core. And it's all the same. Red Hat platform in all of the, all, all all those places, which is which is very very interesting. Uh, just very quickly, high high level requirements on these two things: DU and then CU and BBU. We have of course a huge list of D, 
nitty gritty detailed requirements, technical requirements, what we have to meet. Now, the CU is, um, is not, from our point of view, from software platform point of view, is not a big deal. It's easy to do, or relatively easy to do. Only, only big challenge is a scalability, because there will be so many sites having CUs. But from the functional point of view, Red Hat OpenStack and Red Hat OpenShift fully credible to do CU. The DU is more challenging, but as I said, even DU is now in Rakuten case, which is a public case, is running Red Hat OpenStack with all the real-time knobs activated, what we can do. Uh, it, it is a real-time environment and it needs to have this PTP, this famous PTP, Precision Time Protocol, for the, to for the time synchronization between the remote radios and the DU functionality, which in Rakuten case is provided by a company called Altiostar on Red Hat platform. So all that is done. And hardware acceleration is pretty much much, much, much uh, in, in uh, DU case. But that's all done. And a uh, little bit de deployment models. I mentioned already that when you have DU, CU uh, entity division, you can uh, relocate those functionalities in different places in the network depending on your connectivity characteristics. So all, all those things can happen. And Red Hat platforms, you know, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, obviously, Red Hat Core OS, which we got uh, in the acquisition of a company called Core OS, Red Hat OpenStack platform, Red Hat OpenShift platform can be used in any of these places. Not on the remote radio, that has to be, so we don't have anything to do on the antenna side. That's, that's too deeply uh, embedded environment. So, but anything after that, all good. Now, these are the things, five buckets we've been doing for OpenStack during the NFE journey during last five, six years. No performance, networking performance has to be there, real-time capabilities have to be there, all these things, and availability uh, features, security, which Francois will talk about a bit more. So these we have done together with other people in the OpenStack community, not just Red Hat, but other people in OpenStack community. Uh, we have done this uh, during these years, and so OpenStack in general, and Red Hat's OpenStack in particular, is very credible for as a base for NFE, any NFE use case we know today, even the RAN. And uh, for the last 18 months, maybe, maybe, maybe 24 months, we have been doing the same to the Kubernetes platform in Kubernetes communities and other communities, and then downstream that into Red Hat. Uh, OpenShift, which is our Kubernetes platform. So that container platform is also credible and ready for prime time. It only uh, depends when the network function vendors containerize their network functions. So we work with big and small network function vendors to containerize their uh, network functions into containers to be used. Now. Just a little bit on, on 5G uh, uh, standards or 5G model, which is um, again different than we have seen before. Now the, the, the interesting thing, one of the interesting thing in 5G is that the standardization took a different approach than we have see, ever seen before during the 4G and 3G and so forth. So 5G standardization, core network standardization took a, a very serious uh, software API approach between all these functionalities and also they are uh, calling for even uh, uh, deployment or implementation techniques like containers. The standardization says containers would be a good thing to have. Containers and even microservices. That's a new approach from telco network standardization but obviously that fits into the modern world very well. And this is then how, again, container platform like Red Hat OpenShift would fit into the picture. And this is only the control, control part of the 5G network, of course. User plane, the same thing, but it was easier to draw like this. So a bunch of open source projects, which can be used in network building networks, these are upstream projects, and we are not productizing all of these, and we are not even working uh, with all these upstream projects 
it's just a uh, kind of example how many opportunities and possibilities in open source world there is to build a supported network. Okay, Francois. So thank you, thank you, Timo. I will try to go quick because I understand I still have five uh, five minutes. But what you see is that cloud platforms are basically the foundation of the new network. So we are all hearing about NFV, SDN. So the world is going full software, and going full software means also that. Every day, there is new vulnerability found in, in, in software. If you look to at CNV like Stack, it's not only one software, it's a piling up of software. So it means that at the end of the day, uh, security and securing the foundation of, um, of the stack is really, is really important, and for several reasons. You've heard about VNF uh, containers. So obviously, if you are not securing the foundation, you might have uh, a problem, especially when you see the type of application that uh, 5G is going to power. Because before a breach might be a leakage of data, here we are speaking uh, about consequences on human life potentially, if you take autonomous cars. So we should really consider security uh, as a key. I'm obviously very pessimistic about the future of security. That's why I'm working in, in, in this area, because there is a, a big opportunity. So for me, it's really key, and you are not going to, to roll out massively uh, NFV and SDN if security is not taken into account. Obviously, Timo has been explaining our model. We like security by transparency. We like to see people having access to the code. Um, and I'm going to very quickly explain uh, what is the vision uh, of Red Hat. So, Obviously, in the enterprise, they are more advanced than in the, in the telco world, in the sense that they are already moved to a container type of technology. They are implementing DevOps pipeline, but also DevSecOps pipeline. So, because a lot of people are obviously saying, and rightfully, that security is only considered at the end of the project. And in fact, we, we, sh we need to change completely the model. You need first to take your security objective. It might be your company objective, it can be like PCI DSS or EPA or any uh, national security agency type of requirement. And you need to build on that. Then you have your, the development of the app itself. Today, what we see is that security is not built in from the start. It's like bolted, you know, it's bolting on later on. What we see is that 5G, it's the opportunity to redesign the application into containers. And that's where you have the opportunity to embed security in your um, development of your application. So you need to, to use um, application security software and best practices. And then when you have a secure application, that's the time you, you deploy that on a trusted platform. And we are going to come on what does that mean, a trusted platform later on. And obviously, you go 5G, you go container. So you have all these microservices. So who can manage the complexity of these, of these microservices? You need to automate if you want to enforce security, if you want to monitor security. So that's what we mean by manage. You need to be able to automate the audit of your data center. And if you see a deviation compared to your objective, you need to, be, to use automation to correct it. That's what we call uh, remediation. Obviously, I'm not going to make uh, you a, a long, uh, long time on that. But if you look to 5G, it needs to depend on a strong secure foundation because we are moving to containers. Before you had the VM with a network isolation, now we are on a platform where you are sharing the operating system. So you better make sure that you are using all the, the knobs like AZ Linux, Secure uh, Compute, C Groups, Namespace, in order to make sure that you are between container isolated and you are protected your host OS. And we did a, 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 a webinar with SDX Central on the 12th September uh, where we are going through all that, performance, but especially uh, security. You get some of the things like the crypto library, as the Linux, also physical security, because the attacker is most often an insider and not an outsider. So you need to make sure that you can also protect the physical access. I'm not going into all that. You will get the, the slides. But that's the basic. So the host OS matters. So if Red Hat has been acquiring core OS, there are some good reasons, because we believe the OS is the base of everything. And then you move into the layer and it's software defined, so it's API. So you need to protect 
basically, and you need to encrypt the, the communication. So this one is just saying, it's just OpenStack. OpenStack is a great project. It's very modular. You can manage compute, storage, key management. So what we try to do as Red Hat is that we are documenting the best practice to harden your OpenStack deployment. And obviously, you can decide to encrypt your uh, Cinder volume. You can manage the key in the proper way. You can manage, you can encrypt the communication just to make sure that you do not have any, any breach at this level um, as well. And obviously, you need to manage the life cycle of all that because I mentioned software, you have vulnerability every day. So you need to be able to be highly responsive when you need to do uh, patching. And, and to be honest, with VM is not that easy. I think with container, in terms of operation, it will be more easy. Then you have the, the, the container platform. You had like T system mentioning about OpenShift. We have a white paper which is called the 10 layer of uh, container security, which is basically the control and the defense. So you have, you need to be sure what's in, inside your container. So you might need to have a, a, a scanner of container. Is your container still healthy against the known vulnerability? The registry, is your registry a trusted registry? CI-CD pipeline, you can do unit testing. That's what we call DevSecOps. You can have like third-party applications that are doing some security gating before you go to production. And deployment policy, you can decide when you want to deploy your container. If you know your container is exposed to, ex to some CVE, you just decide not to deploy it. And I, I will not go into the detail because I can spend uh, one day on that, and I, I'm sure you do not want to, to spend one day with me speaking about that, but network isolation, um, uh, storage, multi-tenancy, API security, that's all these aspects you need to take into consideration, and also audit and logging, because you may want to integrate this cloud platform into your security operations center. Last but not least, security is about multi-layer of protection. So it means that you may want to team up with companies like, uh, like Fortinet and, uh, or other that can extend these defense in depth because you can deploy it now this type of um, functionality much more easily than in the past, virtualized or containerized. And we, we, we do work with a large uh, security ecosystem. And just to, to finish, it's, it's a game. This morning we had the, the very good presentation of uh, the gentleman of, of BT, head of cybersecurity. It's always a kind of, of race. So you, you need to be better than the attacker. And for the attacker, it just needs to find one door open to enter. When you are a technology provider, you need to close all the potential uh, doors. So it's not like really equal weapon. But what we try to do is to make sure that even if the world is going software, that's what I've been mentioning, you still have hardware capability. It's still running on server. And in this server, you have like specific capability, like a trusted platform module. Or you might have, like uh, you see here, hardware security module, which is very secure equipment to store keys and to manage uh, the generation of, of, of passwords. So what we are doing as Red Hat, we are working with this ecosystem to make sure you can use the security appliance together with OpenStack, together with OpenShift. And we are also uh, working on community projects, uh, as explained by Timo, to support trusted platform module. We've been hearing a lot of hedge computing. How do you make sure when you are distributing your data center that nobody has been touching the integrity of the, the, the lower stack? So what we try to do is to go with Keyline project to make um, remote attestation of the complete stack. And we've been announcing something uh, recently, which is the Confidential Computing Consortium, which is uh, an intent to build a new project in the Linux Foundation. And that's not only Red Hat, that's Google, Intel, ARM, Alibaba, Microsoft, where we are going to give to the community some of our projects to work on as a basis to build a trusted execution environment, mening that if the environment is untrusted, like a public cloud, you can, for example, encrypt the workload, not only at rest, but in memory. So it's kind of challenging, but uh, every partner like Google, Microsoft, and, and Red Hat, we are bringing a project, we are bringing the project called Enarx, and if you want to know more, just contact me uh, after the presentation. And with this, I give the mic back to uh, my good friend, Timo, for the conclusion. I think I actually talked about all these to topics already. So OpenStack uh, evolution for the last uh, 
five, six years, now doing the same on cloud native, OpenShift, building and networks together with our big and smaller network partners or network builders, not ourselves, and 100% open source and secure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.